No, I started, but you are welcome to record this session as well. But uh, the session is recorded and the session will be played on YouTube as well. So you don't have any worries about not uh, doing something or doing something out of turn. We've continuing with our PowerPoint at this stage, going on to, let's take a look at what calculated fields are. If, well, in general queries is a criteria that we set on a table. So, and calculated fields are like temporary fields, if you want to call it like that. I'm putting the word fields there in double inverted quotes. Uh, in a query to display calculations for each record in a query. As you can see there on the, on the slide, there's a first name, there's a surname of a person, and there's his yearly salary. So if we want to get, uh, uh, yeah, if we want to get the yearly salary, what I did, I took the salary or the field salary and I multiplied it with 12. If we take a look in our Access database, I'm going to go to the design view of the query. Here's my, let's just quickly take a look at the table. Here's my table. Um, I've got the person's name, surname, his salary per month, his date of birth, the date he was employed by the company, the department to which he belongs to or the department which he's working in, if he's a departmental manager or not. And then for some bonus, if they do their work properly, they get some employment star points. So what I want to do, I want to work out what is this person's yearly salary, but we don't need to have a field there. We can go and calculate what his yearly salary is. So what I did in a query, I put on yearly salary with a colon, and that's important because whatever's in front here is going to be what's going to be the heading of that particular column. And then I take a square bracket. That's a very important, having those square brackets, because that says that's going to be the name of the field. So I'm taking salary, close the square bracket, times 12. And that's going to give me my yearly salary. So if we run it, you can see what it did. It took the yearly salary and then multiplied it with 12. Important to note the name of the column, the colon, then the name of the field in square brackets times 12. If we get back to our presentation, you'll see the same here. The name of the field in square brackets. That's very important. If we go on to the next one, as you can see, all fields must always be inside square brackets. The word always, always means it must, if you want to call a field, that's the way you're going to do it. That's how access was programmed for that. If we go to the next one, sorry, I'm running a bit fast because we've got so much to work through in 40 minutes that I'm so sort of just going through the motions here. Okay, calculated uh, fields in queries and naming of the field. That is the part which is talking about fields here as, uh, as a type of fields. It's not a field per se. It's just a name that's inside a query because it's not really a field. It's a calculated field. So we have to name it something from the start. So what do we do? In the start, we call it whatever it is, then with a colon. That indicates to access whatever comes before there and then the colon. That's going to be my name. Right. And there it's always followed by a colon. Next one. Yes, there's two functions which we love to use in 
axis. Now, what is a function again? A function is something that's built in to axis that can give you an answer. In this case, we, we kind of use always two functions here. The first one is int, where we do inside that int, and interesting to note, it's round brackets. How does that differ from square brackets? Always functions have some form of round bracket. And with these two functions, and unfortunately these are the two functions you need to know. It's not a question of I don't understand, it's a question of I need to know how it looks. So the first one is int, where we've got all our calculations inside. And the second one, most frequently used is round, where we do our calculations, comma, and then we put the amount of decimals afterwards. Let's go and take a look at each one in detail. The first one int is easy. That's as is there, you'll see there in the, in the query, we start off with int. We pass to it all of that. There's my calculations. I took my salary, square bracket salary, because that's the name of my field, timed it with 12, and then I say, whatever answer you get in there, put an int around it. The way I usually do these calculations, I would actually do the calculation first. So I would say, salary, square bracket, times 12. Okay, so that's working, great. If I quickly run it, there we go, it's working. Now I need to create it as a whole number. So I'm just gonna put int in front of it, round bracket, go right to the end of that query and close the round bracket. So I'm not trying to do everything in one step. I'm doing first the calculation, thereafter I go and put in the int. Okay, yes, in the exam you won't have time most likely to do that. So you'll do whatever you can with whatever you've got at that particular stage. But if you work correctly, then you can do one, two steps inside of that function. If we go back, that one is not as difficult as you think. The next one, round as well, it's also not very difficult. Same thing here. Instead of int, we now put round, and then we need to put the amount of decimals on the outside. Apologies, I can see that slide there is not really correct. There should be two decimals. Let's go and set that up. So instead of int, I just replace that with round. I do my calculation, comma, two. If I run it, you'll see there's two decimals, two decimals. You'll see some of them do not have two decimals. It depends on the final answer at this stage. If the final answer is just one decimal after the fact, then it will show you only one decimal. Otherwise, it will always show you up to two decimals after the fact. Let's just delete that one for now. Okay, so that is, at this stage, what we've learned. Round and int. Int makes a whole number. Round rounds off after the decimal to two numbers or to whatever amount you want. If we go to the next one, the one that we really love not to do and that's using dates in calculation. Okay, so again, there we've got five of them. We've got the word date, which will, and, and take a look what I'm saying there. I'm saying will return, which means will give you an answer of today's date. Year will return or give you an answer of the year that's inside the data. Same with month, gives you an answer of the month inside the data. The data is a date field, a date time field. And month name returns the month as a string text or returns the word January, February, March. 
the others, except for date, year, month, and day, will return a character from, from one through to 12 for month, for year, what the actual year is, and day between one and 31. Okay, so how are we going to use those dates? Interesting to note, using dates in calculations. I'm going to stop here for a minute, and I'm gonna show you something that you might not have come across before. I'm not sure if everyone is gonna understand this, but I'm gonna try in any case. And that is the way we deal with dates in Microsoft Access and Microsoft Excel and how the, the program itself actually deals with dates. Okay, so here I've got a field which has been formatted according to date. So there's the first date, 1899. The month is December 31st. That was literally the, the last day of the previous century. Then I started with the year 1900, the first day. Then it jumps to 1900, the 30th, 1900, the 31st. Then it goes on to 12th, December, 1900, and so forth. Let's just put in today's date here. Uh, today is the 7th. Right, okay. So it kind of looks like a date field. Yes, it is a date field. Let's go and take a look at the design view of the date. Yes, date and time. So that is correct. But take a look now what's going to happen when I do the following. I take the date time and I change it to number. If I go back to view, save the table, yes. Hmm, interesting. Now I've got a 1, a 2, 31, 32, 365, 366, and for today's date, 43928. And this is where the secret lies with dates. Dates at the back end. That is the end where no one looks. That's where you'll never look in your entire life. Is stored actually as a number. And what Microsoft Access does from the 31st of December, 1899, converts the number to a date format. So when we're working with dates, we're actually working with numbers behind. So when we do calculations with dates, don't think of a date as a date. Think of a date as just a normal number. Today, from the 31st of December, 1899, which was day number one. Today, according to Microsoft Access, we are on day 43,928. So if I'm gonna to take today's date and subtract yesterday's date, I'm actually saying take 43,928 minus 43,927. It's gonna give me one, the day difference between the two. I'm putting this back, but I hope this makes days kind of more understandable to people because all that you are seeing here in front of you, it's just the end product. But if you kind of know what the behind is, then suddenly working with dates becomes actually very easy. Let's go back to our PowerPoint presentation. Right, so let's take a look how we do some calculations. So we're going to calculate how long does the employees work at a business. So we took today's date. Now, if you can remember at the back end, it's a number 43,000, whatever, 928, minus the date employed. It's actually gonna give us a difference 
of days between the two dates. And all that we have to do to get it to years is divide it by 365. At the back end, we were still working with numbers. So don't look at dates as dates. Look at it as a number. So if we take a look now at our query, I hope everyone can see the query. Is everyone still okay? I'm not seeing any messages here in the Zoom chat. If you've got any questions whatsoever at this stage, please send them through. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to deal with them right here, right now. But at the end, I'm going to give you some of my details and you'll be able to send some. Can everyone see the query page or should I switch on the magnifier? Let me switch on the magnifier if it's going to be able to switch on. There we go. The computer sometimes a bit slow. Okay, there we go. So there's my magnifier. Okay, right. So everyone should be able to see that now. So let's take a look at work. Let's put there the word work. So let us take a look at our date. So we pull through date, which is currently 43,928 minus. And what we're going to do now, we're going to take the date employed. And remember what we said about fields inside square brackets. So we're going to put the date employed, close square bracket. If we run it as is, okay, it just gives us an amount there because that's the day's different difference between the two dates. For me to get it as years, I divide, oops, apologies, I divide by. 365.25 actually because there's 365 and a quarter day um, for every year. It's only every fourth year we make up that quarter. Then it becomes 366, but we don't need to deal with that. Okay, so there, and if you don't know what this means, it means it is just a bit too large for the cell to display. So I just drag it a bit bigger and then we go. So all of them are working for the business between nine, this guy's working for 16 years, 17 years. And now we can go and use our functions to round off. So let's go round that particular one to let's say three decimals. So if we run it, it goes down to three decimals. Okay, so what have I just done? I have calculated using the date function and all I did, I called the field. But remember now, just always keep this one at the back. It, it, it really works that you do dates this as well as kind of a um a number and don't see it as dates okay the reason why i'm doing that because i'm going back to my powerpoint All right next slide so using dates and calculations we've done now that part there next slide oh yeah apologies we've missed this one um calculate the age that's what we've done um, we could also do it this way. There's always more than one way to do this. Remember, what does year do? Year returns the year of, 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 of um, a particular set of data. So in this case, yeah, this one uh, calculates the age, but there's two, two ways to, um, to do this. We can do it the date of birth in square brackets, obviously. to the date employed, also obviously in square brackets, I forgot to put in the square brackets there. So there's two ways always of doing this. 
You just need to think about which one is better for you. If you want, some people tend to find using the functions like year, month, day work better for them to calculate, do calculations as opposed to just using the fields. But if you're going to use the fields as numbers, then suddenly the calculations becomes a bit easier. All right, so using dates in calculations. So here we're doing um, the others. We're doing month, year, and day. In this case, what does month do? It returns the month. Um, display only the months where the employee did not receive their bonus yet. Important with the month. You will see now in this particular query that Let's see, bonus here. I'm switch on the magnifier just now. There's the magnifier. Right, so to get, a, uh, to get the, the month, we're just gonna say month, round bracket, of the current date. So that's gonna return for us first date, and out of that date, we only want the month, and we are in April. So we're gonna take that one. And we're going to subtract, also, we just want the month out of the date of birth, which is square brackets, date of birth, square bracket, close round bracket. Okay, however, some of them have now already received. Uh, we are currently in month four, so for some of them, it was January. So that will be kind of like four minus one. It's gonna give us negative answers. So we don't want those negative answers. We want only to have those limited to the positive answers. So in my criteria, I'm going to add the greater than zero. So that would give me or greater or equal to zero because we only pay bonuses at the end of the month. So these guys are going to get all the bo people that's bonuses at the end of this month or for the rest of the year. So if you take a look there, there's a few of them that's going to receive. If I take away the criteria, it's gonna give me everything, even the people that already had their, uh, had their birth dates or date of birth, right? Okay, so this is the way we can mix and match dates. All right, let's go to this one using, uh, we've done that one now. Let's go to the next one. Uh, the day returns just the day of a date. So if we want to have all the people that's got their birth dates in a particular day or on this day today, we can just say that's your birthday list. Take your date of birth and extract from that the day. Here we've got date of birth, which is a field, so we have to put it in square brackets, and then we put on it the day function in round brackets, and that's gonna give us the day today. Next one that we're going to do. Okay, um, this is days. What you can do at this particular stage then is, let's take a look at this. Calculate a bonus of 10% on the monthly salary and display to two decimals. Calculate a bonus of 10%. So we have to take the salary here. I'm just going to delete everything out here. There we go. I'm going to drop the people's names and surnames. Okay, so we want to give them a bonus. Right, so in this bonus, we want to give them a 10%. They don't specify if it's the annual bonus or um, on their monthly salary. Right, so that's that one. So we can take the salary as is there. Remember now, salary is a field name. So square brackets times 
10%, how do we display 10%? It's usually 10 divided by 100. So that would be the first part. If we run it now, it gives us that amount. So let's say, for example, now, we want to put that to two decimals. Then we're going to put in front of it round that salary, comma, two decimals. Okay, so let's run it again. There we go. However, we are working with round and center, am I correct? Yeah, we're working with rand and cent. So we would kind of want that as rand and cent as well. So let's take a look on how we're going to put that as rand and cent. Right. So ooh, let me just move it along here. Right. On this particular field. So I'm highlighting the field. I'm going to say there. Let me just get to it. There we go. I'm going to format my fields. How did I get to this property sheet? There at the top, in my design of my query, there's a property sheet. So I just click it and then it uh, comes on. Here as well with the totals, this is the way we're going to use for aggregated functions. And please come back tomorrow because tomorrow I'm doing aggregate functions. The easiest part of Microsoft Access. You won't believe it, how easy this stuff is. It's even easier than this. Okay, let's get back to today's work though. Uh, property sheets, so I just click property sheets and then I go to the format and I go put the currency. Usually, you can, yeah, you can set the amount of decimal places here if you forget the round function. But in the exams, they, they are going to ask you to use a function. They're not going to ask you to format it. Right, so I'm just showing you this one. I've got a question here. Uh, what date and time functions can be used when you want to determine the age of someone by using their date of birth? I'm going to come back to that particular one just now. Uh, let's just quickly finish this one. So if we click run there, there we go. So it gives me the bonus as formatted currency. Right, let's go take a look at the question that was asked on the private chat or on the group chat. It's asking what date and time functions can be used when you want, when you only want to determine the age of someone using only their date of birth. Okay, let's quickly run through this one. So here, I'm going to, so let's put here again, the person's age. So we said to determine the person's age, let's just use the here functions. Let's just use those functions. So we're going to say year of the date. What does date do? Date returns to us that we only need to um, get today's date. I see someone raised their hand, but I don't quite know yet how to get there. So for now, I'm just going to kind of ignore it. Not that I want to, but um, just because of the fact I don't really know how to give attention to you when you raise your hand at this particular stage because we're doing this virtually. Right. Okay. So we've got the date. So we first want to get the year out of that date. So we're going to find the date there and only then are we going to apply the year. So today's date, and remember at the back of our heads, this is all numbers. So it's going to take a huge number. It's going to take the year out of that. So minus, we're going to put the year again because what do we want the year? But now we're going to call the field date of birth square bracket, close round bracket. So for those two now, we said, call the date, but I want the year out of that date only. Call for me the date of birth and get the year out of that as well. 
Let's go and run it. There we go. Gives us the people's age as a way by using a function, date functions. I'm not doing any time functions at this stage because that's a 40 minutes lesson on its own. But it's also, it's very interesting how they save times. I'll, if there's some time left, I'll show you afterwards. But this is the way to be able to work out a person's age in access using just the functions. And to be honest with you, with year, month, day, we can actually calculate most of the answers that they throw at us in the exams. It is a calculated field and those three year, month, day, together with date, can become very powerful in doing calculations. But th don't think, and I, and I can't stress this enough, don't think of dates as 31 January 1899. Think of dates as a number, an integer number. Right, okay, let's continue with our uh, let me just, with the sizing, there we go. Right, um, calculate the bonus based on the, um, oh, uh, apologies. Calculate the bonus based on the amount of years that the person has worked for the business. So the formulas, oh, the, lovely, they even give you the formula. The amount of years worked times the salary times 125. So this is very similar to working out how old the person is. In this case, it is just the amount of years worked. So if we go and take a look at our database, here we go. So we have the two. We have got the, the date of birth and the date they were employed. So we need to work out the years in between those two. Hey, it's exactly the same. <laughs> I actually only need to uh, replace that date with something else. Okay, now the question is, which one is first? The date employed or the date of birth? Which one would you put first? Let's quickly take a look here. Um, let's see, uh, there in your chat, just tell me which field will be first which field would you put first to do the calculation would you put the date of birth first or would you put the date employed first anyone date of birth someone say date of birth some people say employee okay those two people that answered me which one of those two values think don't think of number don't think of dates now think of numbers the date employed and the date of birth, which one of those two would be the greater number, if it was a number? Would be the date employed. I see I've got 15 minutes left. I'm actually going a bit faster than I calculated. So yeah, we can stand a bit at this one. We would put the date employed. Why would we put the date employed? Because that's a larger number. If you think about it, you were born, you grew up, and you were lucky enough to find a job. So the date employed should be the larger number. So we can put the date employed minus the date of birth. And it's the same, year, date employed, minus year, date of birth. There we go. Cool. Cool runnings. There we go. So, uh, yeah, according to this one, you can see my, that my data calculations, when I originally downloaded the data, uh, I put in some, some, uh, some ranges, and you will see that most likely all of them are working between 21. There's one guy working 19 years. 22 years, believe me when I, oh, sorry, apologies, it doesn't say, it says it's still age, that should not be the age, that should be employment years. Apologies about that, I did not see, sometimes these faults sneak upon us. 
Okay, uh, as I was saying, when I downloaded this data, I said a few ranges for downloading numbers because I downloaded the data as numbers, not as dates, and I formatted them later. And I put a few ranges and you can see that inside the ranges that, uh, yeah, the people are working, most of them are working long. It's going to change some of that data, maybe. Uh, we've got here 2019, we're in 2020. And this guy, Cracknell, Cracknell, uh, that's interesting. That shows you how it works. Okay. Uh, Let's see, employment, here's data employed. Let's see now. Oh, yeah, we need to run it. Okay, Cracknell, Cracknell is still 23 years. I'm not sure why. Let me just close the table for a minute. There we go. I'm just hoping. Data employed minus data birth. Uh, it's still Cracknell gives me now 24 years employed. Um, date employed to year date of birth. If anyone can tell me where the problem is at this stage, I see there is a question on how do we format it back to currency. In this case, we're not going to use currency, but if there was something, would go, I'm just moving, a property sheet, make sure we highlight this particular field and then click on the format here and change that to currency. Okay, right. Here's employed minus year date of birth. It might be, I am not sure why it's giving me, uh, yeah, date employed. Oh, so, oh, sorry. Yeah, what's wrong? Who knows what I'm, I made a mistake. Yes, thank you very much. There, it's coming through. I can see some people are working here. That's great. Yes, thank you very much, Willem. Willem said it must not be date of birth. It must be today's date. And today's date, so we're going to put the year of date, open bracket, close round bracket, close round bracket, minus date employed yes so apologies my fault yes that's happy that's just what happens sometimes when you're live okay so the year date because date will be our larger number because it's today's date minus the date employed if we run it now there we go cracknell's not working even a year for this person somehow the names and surnames again i'm I do apologize for that because somehow when I downloaded the data, I used the same field. Um, I use mockaroo.com to download some data for me to make up some data. So if ever you're in a position where you want to generate a huge amount of data within two seconds, like a thousand records within two seconds, go to mockaroo.com. Okay, yes, let's go on. Yes, uh, Mrs. Robbie Mum. Yes, that is correct. Today's date minus the date of employment. That is great. Yes, that is how we're going to do that particular one. Right. Um, you can see that there's some of the tags here. So if you've got some questions, some additional questions, um, we can go to lockdown hashtag, lockdown school hashtag STEM champion with just one M, apologies again, about how we do things. Just to show you something interesting, I am see we've got some time left. I'm not sure how much time. The grouping, um, I'm here for three days. So Penny, you've got 10 minutes. Thank you. I, uh, I've got 10 minutes left. Um, someone's asking me, how do we do grouping in queries? If you can come back for tomorrow's lesson, I'm just devoting one whole lesson to queries and grouping of queries and aggregate functions. So that's going to be tomorrow's lesson for 40 minutes. Then on the third lesson, which I'm going to do on Thursday, I'm going to do reports. 
and grouping inside reports. So hold on to your horses. Anzi, make sure you're back here tomorrow. Of course, I'm going to especially dedicate that one to, um, to you and to the rest of the people that's going to that seemingly find this difficult. But believe me when I tell you, this is very, very, very easy. Uh, one thing that I want to show you quickly, seeing that we've got some time left, I actually didn't think that I was going to go this fast. Um, just please let me know, people, are you all still busy there, still coping? Is there something you would like me? Um, is there something that you would like me to do? I can see there, isn't that the age they started working? Yeah, like I said, my daughter is not really 100% correct at this particular stage so yes the data is uh, kind of ditching me today of course i wasn't thinking when i when i downloaded the data i just downloaded the data and put it inside there um, any questions from anyone right on the format i see european currency and not rands format okay so what i'm going to do at this stage i'm gonna um just stop the magnifier i'm going to minimize that my powerpoint i'm going to stop there at this particular stage the problem might be with your computer at this particular stage what you need to do to get the correct format is to go to regional and language settings regional they set region format. There's two things you need to do here. So I'm quickly going to show you. This is a Windows 10 computer. Hopefully you've all got Windows 10. If you've got Windows 7, it actually works the same. There's no change in it. Uh, let's do it the way the control panel shows us. So I'm going to go here to control panel. And then we wait for my computer. There we go. Right, so here's clock and region. You will also find this, no matter if it's Windows 7, 8, or 10, or whatever. Change the date and time number format. So that's the first thing that you need to do. Then go in there and go to additional settings. Right, there's two things you need to change here. Uh, sorry, just one thing. First of all is that decimal symbol under Windows 10 has become a comma. So you're going to have trouble with your Excel. So change that to a dot. Right, that's the first thing. Then your currency symbol. So in the customized format, the first thing you need to change is the decimal symbol, set that to a dot. And in currency, set that to an R. So that's the easiest way to do this. There's other ways to do this as well. The format should be English South Africa. That's, that's what the format. So again, how do we get it? Go to control panel, change your date and time. Go to additional, first of all, change the English South Africa. Additional settings. Change that to a dot and then the currency to an R. Then your stuff in access should be fine. Right, I hear uh, we've got five minutes left. I'm quickly going to resume my PowerPoint, if you don't mind. So this is for something for you to take away. So see if you can go and download the, 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 the file. Uh, for tomorrow, we're using the same file, same data. I'm not going to change anything at this particular stage. But you can ask me, right, so what am I telling you to take away from this message? Right, you can use fields to calculate answers for each record, but these calculated fields are based most likely on numbers. And what I've done, I've done a few numbers and I've done especially dates because that's usually where the people don't really know. Right, there's at least two functions where we can uh, put things in perspective. Uh, or uh, integers and decimal values. And then date has five different functions of which date is the only one that does not require to have a field because it returns today's date. Secrets to storing dates, I've shown you the secret. 
I would love to show you the time, because time is even more incredible, how it's actually stored. See dates as numbers. As soon as you see dates as numbers, then that would become very important. Right. Uh, there's some helpful links for you. Uh, those of you that want to take screenshots or whatever, this is going to be placed on YouTube in any case. So you're welcome to go to YouTube and go look at it once it's uploaded. Yes, tomorrow. Yes, aggregate functions. The one we all love to hate, but you're going to love them. You're going to, after this, you're going to smile at aggregate functions and the grouping thereof. That's my details. You can email me there. Um, I've also got an it-cat.co.za Facebook page. And then um, you have to, if you're going to ask questions in that, you can do it at Africa Teen Geeks or hash lockdown schools. Right. I can see that everyone is there. So any other questions? We've literally got maybe two minutes left and then we're done for today. And that's cat access done. Yay. I hope everyone had a good lesson here or a good session here. If there's anything you want to know privately or whatever, there's my email address. There's the social media. Please let me know. If there's something think you've, that I've done incorrectly, teachers, please let me know if I've done something wrong. Because I can see from my data that, yeah, kind of they started working a bit early, some of these people. I think some of them were one or two years old. Okay, someone wants me to go back to the YouTube links. Uh, let me just get to my PowerPoint. Yeah, there's the YouTube links. And that's it. Uh, yeah, we're done for today. My host, graciously, um, I'm going to uh, mute my mic now as well. I'm going to leave this here for the YouTube. And then graciously, um, I'll still be online to... I think we're done. That's okay, stopped. thank you everyone. I'm gonna give you a few more minutes just to take a photo of those links. Or screenshot. Then, or screenshot. Yes. And then I'm going to end the meeting. So if you've got any questions, you can still use the Zoom group chat until it goes off.